Hey guys, I'm here today on the Power by the Hour dyno in my 2019 manual Mustang. Now, the reason I bring the car up to the dyno today is I want to do some testing on timing. Now, a lot of you guys out there that have very mildly modified Mustangs, very mildly modified, meaning, you know, cold air, maybe some exhaust, you know, which is 80% of the customer base, are always wanting to wring it out as much as we can. And you rely on us and you say, Alex, I want all the shit. I want all the sauce. I want all the timing. We got to understand the vast amount of testing we've done on these vehicles in terms of timing, in terms of can timing, in terms of fueling, we know what is best for the vehicle. And nine times out of 10, when you guys ask for one more degree, can I just get one more degree? I got beat by two cars. I want one more degree. Well, that one more degree is not going to give you 20 more rear wheel horsepower. If you got beat by two cars, you're going to need like 30 or 40 more horse to get past that guy. But a lot of people want to, you know, oh, I, I see 31 on the log. You know, there's a lot of amateur data loggers out there that all they look at is timing. Never mind load, never mind cam timing, never mind knock sensor. All they look at is timing and RPM and say, I want the timing to come in faster at this RPM or I want 32 degrees, 33 degrees. Well, this is what I'm going to do. This car has the production file that I would give anybody else with a manual Mustang with no modifications. This car has a stock cold air, stock exhaust, stock, stock, stock. The only thing it does have is an E85 R tune from Lund Racing right off our production file system. No modifications, no special sauce, no nothing. This tune is capped at 31 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baseline it on that tune, meaning the tune you get is the same tune this car has if you have a manual Mustang. So I'm gonna baseline it on this calibration. And then what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna back it down to 27 degrees, then add two more degrees. So 27 degrees, make a pull. 29 degrees, make a pull. I already have a pull on 30, I'm, I'm already gonna have a pull on 31 degrees. Then I'm gonna shove 33 degrees into this car and see how much of, of a difference you pick up from 27 to 29, 29 to 31, 31 to 33, let's get after it. For those of you that follow my channel closely, I've told you many times, before you go to a dyno and you wanna make a pull, you disconnect this little guy from the harness, like so. Now everything is disabled. When you are at the track and you want everything disabled, advanced track, everything, unplug that guy and it does it for you. Let's go make a pull. You're gonna get ready to make a pull, so I'm gonna see what the conditions are as the car sits here and then I'm gonna to try to make it repeatable so every pull is within a couple of degrees of IAT a couple of degrees of engine coolant temp so that it is back-to-back -back testing it is a hot day today it is 92 degrees here in Florida and pretty muggy so let's get everything going oh look it started right up everyone complaining about hard start issues on E85 and this is the production file now it is muggy and hot down here so the car seems to be happy starting in this weather. Maybe if it's a little drier up by you, it might have a little extra hesitation in terms of startup, but don't stress an extra half revolution or you know a half, an extra 0.2 seconds of startup. If the car goes chugga 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 chugga, fine. You're not gonna burn up the starter, relax. So IAT is 113. IAT is 113, engine or cylinder head temp. There is no coolant temp. It's a cylinder head temp because coolant temp is inferred. 198 cylinder head temp, one, 109 IAT. So let's see what the car does making a pull on the production file that you and I and everyone else would get. Let's go to the make run screen and go from there. Okay, I checked the straps. Let's start from scratch. Make a pull, everything's working. So let's make a pull. I data log it. I almost forgot to data log it. I love driving a manual. Oh, it's not fast in a straight line. Automatic guys make fun of manual guys because we say we feel connected to the car. It's just true. They've never experienced it. So we're going to data log and I'm going to see how much timing it sees, show you guys, see how much power it makes, go from there. It's in fourth gear right now, which is one-on-one -on, -one on 2018 and 19 Mustang on this new MT-82. We'll see what she makes. Come on, baby. I'll start the pull at 2,500 RPM.
a bump stock car just on the 85. Very good. All right, let's show you the results. Okay, sorry about the glare, but the car made 446 rear wheel horsepower, 410 foot pounds of torque. Now let's take a look at the data log and see how much timing, ah, come on zoom, see how much timing it saw. Okay, so there's the pull, sorry about the glare, but check it out, let me uh, graph spark, which on this data log it'll say S-A-F-T-O-T. -T. Okay, so you see how it flat lines there? That means it's hit the cap, because I capped it at 31.3 or something like that, and it saw exactly 31.3. So when you scroll, you see the RPM up top? I pulled it to, what, 7,500 or so? I'm good. Oh, 7613 spark went down because I went past it, but boom. So it averaged between 31.3 and 30. So let's call it 31 degrees, just like I want. This is the file you get, and it's uh, 446, 410 on a bone stock vehicle. Now let's flash it with a tune, and we're going to back it down to 27 degrees and see the difference that uh, four degrees makes. Okay, so 27 degrees it is. Let's data log it. So we made 440. Let's take a look. We made 446, uh, 410 on 31 degrees. We're going to see what we make on 27 degrees. Let me data log the guy. Come on. Cylinder head temp 187. Let's data log and make a pull. Stop fucking around so we don't wear the sucker out. We're here. Start at 2500. Just like last time. and torque is only two down let's show you okay back at the scene of the crime so because I capped the timing at 27 you'll see it flatline a little earlier okay you see that so that means timing was on its way up and I said nah fuck that let's put a roof on it at 27 degrees and when we scroll right to the flat line where's the cursor 27.3 and it stays at 20 look at the rpm up it stays at 27.3 all the way to 7500 rpm so 27.3 degrees, 7,500 RPM, two less, hor uh, four less horsepower. Guys, four. I took away four degrees on an E85 tune from 31, so it made 446 on 31 degrees, 442 on 27 degrees. That's right, not that big of a difference. Let's do it with 29, and then finally with 33. Okay, just flashed the car with the 29 degree tune. Let's get it started. Start data logging, make a pull right away, no fucking around. Let's take a look at IAT and cylinder head temp. Inlet air 107, cylinder head temp 189, so about the same. Diagnostics, data logging, yes, beautiful. This is nice, everything's going okay so far. So, make another pull. The 
run I just made, 29 degrees, made a hair more than the initial run at 31.3 degrees and it made more torque. So what does that tell me? I'm thinking anything past 29 is probably rattling the piston in the bore a little bit and robbing a little bit of horsepower and torque. But look at that, 27 degrees, 29 degrees, 31 degrees. Let's top it all off by going about 32.7 degrees. Let's take a look at the log to confirm it's all 29 and we'll do the last pull on 32.7 degrees. But as before, we made sure that it hit a cap and where did it hit a cap? Let's put the cursor here and I suspect it'll be close to 29 degrees. Boom, 28.8 .8 degrees. Did it ever hit 29? Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Nope, that sucker stayed at 28.8 .8 the whole time and made more power than almost three more degrees. So what does that tell me in this car? That at 29 degrees, it makes the same horsepower as 31 degrees and it's probably stressing out a little less in terms of the spark happening early when the piston is probably still on its way up and it's you know you know combusting the the fuel in there and it's not as a smooth transition than you know the 28 to 29 degrees okay last one last pull 30 degrees this test is pretty much panning out exactly like we thought anything above 29 degrees seems to really not be worth it but we'll try 32 and a half or so and see how it goes because I think as the piston is coming up and you advance the ignition timing too much, it's fighting the piston. The combustion is fighting the piston. Whereas you want the combustion to help push the piston down, you're coming up and you're going, nope, it's still on its way up and it's just going to rattle that piston inside the bore and not make any more horsepower. It's like you're pushing a swing and on the way back, you push against it before pushing with it to give it more inertia to create a bigger swing. Same thing with the piston and combustion. Let's see what it does. Okay, let's party. Oh, make sure we're data logging. Diagnostic, data logging, diagnostics. Beautiful. Everything's off. Brake is off. Make run screen, which means the screen that actually samples. All right, let's go. cylinder head temp is and coolant temp or cylinder head temp inlet air 103 cylinder head temp 189 two degrees hotter than last time it doesn't fucking matter let's go fourth gear let's do it Point seven degrees it made four more horsepower I'm sorry two <laughs> from 446 to 448 from 411 torque to 411 torque three more degrees from 29 were worth two more horsepower I will keep it at 29 and not stress out the piston rattling in the bore than to shove 30, anything above 31 degrees into this car. Check it out. Here it is, 32 and a half degrees, 448, two gigantic, massive, not Clydesdales, regular horses from 29 degrees, 446 and 31.3 degrees, 446. Two, and a lot of you can say, oh, well, that's the difference between a fender. No, it's not. All, it's a difference between your your premature wear on your pistons. It's not worth it. 446 and hell, 27 degrees is super safe because it makes 442. So from 27 degrees to 32 degrees, the gain is a whopping six rear wheel horsepower. Hopefully, next time you guys ask me, Alex, I want that one more degree. I'm gonna send you a link to this video. And if you still want that one more degree, I'm gonna say, you okay with rattling that piston in the bore for two horsepower? Are you okay with that? Because if you are, and your ship blows up and blows a ring land, N.A., or something is funky, N.A., don't blame me, because you wanted all the sauce, 
and you blew it up. Leave it at 31 or so if it's NA, regardless whether you have a Cobra Jet, whether you have an 18 manifold, GT350 manifold, doesn't matter. Anything past 31, you have diminishing gains, and this proved it. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later. Oh, <laughs>